Potato. Easy play. Anytime. Stop. Nada. Much. Slayer Boxer. C. Bisu. Savior. 16 of the most powerful StarCraft gamers in the world. LG. Intel Centrino. Com TV. Star Imitation. Welcome back, guys. Oh, man, that was an amazing game. Welcome to the 2000... Uh, oh. All right, all right, excuse me. Yes, welcome back. Uh, this is the uh, GOM TV StarCraft Invitational, uh, one of the most important esports events in history, if not uh, the most important one. The first StarCraft tournament um, that's inside Korea that's going to be broadcasted all over the world uh, in English. Uh, this is a really big deal. And we've already had an excellent game. We just saw... Savior uh, go against Flash, and it turned out to be just unbelievable. I mean, it started out with Savior having such an advantage. He played a lot like um, I've seen Jadong play before. He got those early uh, air units, used the Mutalist to harass his opponent, then immediately teched to Guardians and took advantage of that uh, that ledge above his opponent's expansion. And it, he was doing so well, he actually manages to have his opponent lift, his, lift the command center back off into his base. And at that point in time, I thought it was over. And then I don't know what happened. I don't know if Flash typed in cheats or what, but then he just managed to muster up enough force, just hold off that attack as Sager tried to put the killing blow on his opponent. He got the units he needed. He marched out and then went around the map just killing expansions. Then he had one army that was just killing off the expansions, maintaining map control so Savior couldn't develop a strong enough economy. And he had another army that was sitting in his expansion to try to defend from Mutalist Guardian Scorch harassment. Unbelievable play by Flash. What a baller. Wow, I'm really impressed. I, I don't even know what else to say. And I know that this game is going to be just as impressive. This is going to be Flash versus Anytime. Anytime, one of my favorite Protoss players out there. But then again, um, who isn't a fan of Anytime? Uh, the map is going to be Katrina. Now, one thing to note right off the bat is that Katrina is a pretty... Uh, pretty Protoss favoring map. It doesn't mean that Terran can't win on it, it just means that Protoss uh, have an easier time. They can get that early expansion up very easily. Uh, the expansion is in the back of your main. So in other words, you don't have to push out uh, and be aggressive in order to expand. You can actually play very defensively and still uh, manage to get that expo up. It's also difficult for Terran to get um, their second expansion, uh, whereas Protoss, they don't really struggle with that as much just due to the structure of uh, Protoss versus Terran. I now see any times during the game. Both players are there. I don't know if they're ready. <laughs> Basically, I, my job is to sit here and keep talking until they are ready. And um, there's any time. Any time. I watched him um, at the Pro League Finals yesterday. He played an awesome game. He's a very, very, very strong player overall. And very good against Karen, actually. Rank 10th in Tesla right now. He is very creative, as, as are all good Protoss players at the very, very top. Protoss is a race that, um, you know, you're, more, you're rewarded if you're creative, um, whereas Flash is a very orthodox player. Uh, orthodox players are generally rewarded if they're tearing. <laughs> so the real question is, can Flash take on any time on a map that really favors uh, a Protoss player? It's going to be very difficult. This is actually their very first time ever facing each other in a, uh, an official tournament match. Because I have the piece of paper in front of me. It says they're 0-0. Zero and zero. So who knows? I mean, we really don't have too much to base this off of other than guessing about their styles, looking at the map. Because um, obviously, uh, obviously, as I just said, you know, they've never met before. But I can't wait to see how this is going to go. Uh, if I can take a look, let me get my piece of paper out. And his record... Um, Flash's record versus Protoss is 18 and 13, 58%, and he is 6 and 1 on this map, the map Katrina. And with when we get down to any time, I believe that any time is versus Terran, 44 and 41, 51.8% win ratio, and he's 9 and 3 on Katrina. So we have two players who have pretty damn good uh, win ratios on the maps that they're playing on. 
but both also have very, very good win records um, on the, on those maps. So it, this is going to be an excellent game, and I can't wait until it gets started. This is a big deal uh, today as uh, GOM TV hosting this English broadcast. Cheers to everybody over at Team Liquid and everybody else around the world who enjoys StarCraft as much as I do, or even half as much as I do, because, you know, I, I really like this game. <laughs> so it's going to be great. Uh, after this match, let's see here. I believe we are going to have... I think Flash actually plays again, unless I'm mistaken. I have so many pieces of paper in front of me. Nope, it's Anytime versus Mind. That'll be an interesting game as well. A lot of people think Mind uh, might be the favorite in the group. I just bet it on Savior and Anytime simply because of their history. But, you know, it's really not always about the history. It's about the now. The players have to, they have to perform well in this instance. Um, it's now or never. I mean, hey, even if you're having a bad day, it doesn't really matter because in the long run, you've still lost. So hopefully both these guys will be uh, playing on their best. I wonder if Flash will be a little bit more warmed up, primarily because he already played an epic game against Savior. Anytime may not be entirely comfortable yet, but then again, it's very hard to say. Um... I also hear that, um, well, yeah, there's going to be a few more minutes. It looks like any time has to get a few more things set up. I see the technical, um, I don't know what they're called, the technical dudes over there trying to help him get his keyboard and mouse set up. In a game like StarCraft, you have to have everything perfect. It has to be just like it is when you play at home. You can't just hop on a computer and start owning it up because... In reality, the controls are so much a part of the game. It's so much about maintaining that level of APM that you're comfortable with. Um, you know, the mouse has to have the perfect settings. It can't feel like it's going too fast or it's going too slow. Otherwise, you just won't be able to mic or, you know, you know, mac or micro or micro at all in reality. Uh, the keyboard, a lot of players refuse to play with anything but their own keyboard. Here we're getting a shot of the audience, all the fans, and there are a lot of them here. This, the, the entire event is packed. I think they weren't even able to let everybody inside, um, if you can believe that. There's people that were actually stuck outside or probably had to go back home and watch on the Internet. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing how, how big this is. And, just it's, you know, it's amazing in general just to think of how big StarCraft is in Korea. There's really nothing else quite like this uh, anywhere else you can go. Uh, it's easily as big as, uh, as you know, any, what anybody would refer to as a real competitive sport. Um, it's, it's impressive, and I have a strong feeling that when StarCraft II comes out, we're going to see a similar effect uh, globally, and I think that's going to be very exciting. I've been in Korea for about, I think this is my fourth week down here, and I just love it. Korea is just such a cool place. There are three PC bongs on my block, if you could even imagine that. That is, uh, that's a lot. I mean, I, I get my pickings of, of where I want to go when I own the noobs, so... I love it. I think it's. I think it's great. Uh, they really. Um, it's. It's a different culture. It's a gaming culture. It's a culture of perfection, really. And I think that's another reason why StarCraft is so admired um, in Korea, is because people realize how hard of a game this is. This is not just like you know some random game that people like for some random reason. It's. It's people like this because it is so challenging. It is so difficult. As you can see on the Korean screen over there on the right, that's uh, that's Garimto. Uh, I went clubbing with him a few nights ago, and let me tell you, man, he's a baller, man. Really cool guy, really nice guy, and his English is actually very good. He doesn't even have an accent when he speaks. I was really impressed. Um, all the Koreans I've met with so far are very polite people, got a lot of manner, and, you know, I don't know, it's, just, it's a very cool culture. I like it a lot. If you ever get the chance, definitely come down to Korea. Going back to any time versus a Flash... I want to bet on any time simply because of the map, because I think that favors Protoss so much, and then the fact that any time is already very well known for having uh, technical and creative Protoss versus Terran. He's taken out a lot of the best players out there, like Nada. I, I think it'll be a tough fight for Flash, but then again, I said the same thing about uh, Flash versus Savior, and Flash was losing the whole time and then came back and won. Really impressive. So, you know, who knows? Who knows? I don't have a crystal ball that I can read that'll tell me this stuff. I'm just going off of their uh, their previous uh, records. I hope everybody's tuned in. And um, if you're not actually watching this live, these VODs will be saved on the uh, website, uh, GOM's website. Please don't rip them. Uh, just go to their site, and you can find them very easily. It's going to be really, really good. 
Uh, you can watch them at any point in time. It's all free. You don't even need to register on the site to do it. And the game is about to begin. Right. We just heard the cheers from the rabid StarCraft fans. Cross spots. Any time at the bottom. And through the process of elimination, that means Flash is at the top. This is a four-player map, so scouting patterns might be a little bit different. On two-player maps, there's generally a higher probability that the player can cheese because he already knows where his opponent is. He can position um, buildings closer to his opponent. Um, you know, it's, just, it's, it's, much, it's much easier. Where on the other hand, um, on maps like this, it's really going to depend on when he finds his opponent and uh, what build he has planned out to begin with. Katrina, a very interesting map. You start out on this massive main. I mean, just a very, very, very large um, platform, which also has an expansion, which is farther back from your ramp than the opening. So a lot of players tend to set up at least somewhat of a defense early on, and then they kind of... Well, they, they expo right away, and it turns into a macro game. Now, that's really good for Protoss, especially because Protoss have an easier time expanding in this matchup than the uh, than the Terrans do. And that's primarily uh, primarily due to the fact that, well, Terran, their army, it's less mobile. And Protoss have a much quicker army. Terran, Terran are, are the strongest when they're set up. Like, when they're in siege mode, they have the mines laid. So it's very difficult in that sense for Terran to get the next expansion. Protoss can start to take the map rapidly, and if they get carriers, um, you know, you're really rewarded for using carriers on a map like this because carriers can cover, uh, well, they can retreat over so many different locations that uh, it's very hard to chase them down with Goliaths. And you know, that's another thing that you know helps Protoss dominate on a map like this. We see the gas now being taken by the Terran. This is very standard. Um, there's almost no other way the Terran can open up against Protoss. And it's normally considered like a cheese maneuver if they are to do anything different than that. They always have to get the barracks and the gas guys. Or fast Nexus. Ooh, that's hot. All right. As we had predicted, um, he will be going for some type of fast expo. <clears throat> fast Nexus is a strategy. It's, it's fairly new. Um, in the, on the StarCraft scene, a lot of people never thought that it would actually be possible for Protoss to figure out a way to uh, expo early on and hold it off. And it turns out that since Terran are essentially forced to get that gas geyser and the barracks early on because they need the factory, those are where they get the units that actually matter in this matchup. Um, because of that, Protoss um, have timed out a way to get the Nexus early, then the, then the gas and the gateway, and get the expansion up. And if they do it right, it doesn't always work, but they can usually hold off the early rush. There's some fans. All right, factory now going down for the Terran. Depot also going down. As we can see, Terran did not wall in. That usually means he's going to get uh, more Marines than uh, if he had walled in. If a Terran walls in, they usually need to get uh, one or two. But in a case like this, this isn't really a map where you can wall in. So in this case, Terran will probably get maybe five or six and use that to hold off any initial Dragoon Rush. But at the same time, Flash doesn't even know yet that his opponent's gotten a fast Nexus. His response will probably be to expand himself. I mean, if you look on the map, these players are very, very far away from each other. There's not many things that Terran could possibly do early on, except for maybe uh, early Starport. Not sure. We can see that Flash's build is very calculated, though, by the fact that he's actually pulling his units there's SCVs off of the gas geyser. Um, uh, you know, he's, he's got it mapped out, so he he's wants them more minerals than he does gas, and he just needs enough gas to get the right amount of uh, you know tanks or the factories, whatever it is he's aiming for. Flash now sees the expansion. He realizes it's going to be a macro game. I assume that siege mode. It could be mines that is being upgraded at the factory. The command center goes down now for the Terran. There it is. So this is going to be another macro game early on, just like the one we had before. Actually, not just like it, because this is a different matchup, but it's going to be... Uh, the emphasis will be on macro. Dragoon range being upgraded, we can see by the spinning thingy on the cybernetic score. Because he realized his opponent fast expanded, he stopped making marines, and he's using the barracks as a scout, or as a spotter. 
That's smart because there's really no need to get those Marines unless, um, well, unless, you know, you're going to get Dragoon Rush. So now that he realizes that, he's, he's not going to bother with it. Moving now with two Marines in the Vulture. Perhaps going to plant some mines. Perhaps he just wants to make it look like he's applying a little bit more pressure, then back off. It's not clear. Zealot hiding under that bush. I can see you, Zealot. You can't hide from me. And SCV is now being transferred. Oh, there I am again. I still look like the Dragon Ball Z character. And it looks like... Um, all right, he set up some type of positioning over there. He has the mines upgraded. It was mines. I probably should have guessed that by the fact that... Um, the Dragoons, uh, excuse me, that the, uh, the Vulture Bikes came out early enough. We also see that anytime he's gotten gas at his expansion, so he's going to be using, he's cl clearly he's going to be getting a, you know, some type of gas tech or early on. Maybe he'll have want some more gas for carriers. Vulture Bikes now running by those Dragoons, planting a few mines, but anytime with excellent micro, manages to pick off one of them. Now those Dragoons are stuck behind the mine line. Anytime will have to be prepared for any type of vulture harassment that may come up. Meanwhile, he's sending those dragoons. Anytime is um, sending them north. Starport for the Protoss. Oh man, he's going carriers. Now the real question we have to ask ourselves is: Will he be able to get the carriers out in time, or will Flash realize this? Even the positioning of the Stargate is important. He's put it in between the two expansions. That's the place where Terran is least likely to scan. Walter Bikes cornered. Goodbye. Our uh, Dragoon cornered. What's up with me swapping my pronouns? All right. We see the Terran getting the armory. I, this seems to be pretty standard on this map. They get the armory early on. They need to have a strong, uh, you know, uh, we'll need to have upgraded tanks and vulture bikes so they can push out. Two starports now. The fleet beacon is being made. Now, Terran is, and Protoss is very, very vulnerable when they're trying to get carriers. Most Terrans know and I'm sure Flash does as well, that the easiest time to kill a Protoss is going carriers is get them while the carriers are making. They've had to sacrifice too many gateways and dragoons and other units so that they can uh, so that they can actually produce the carriers. Because carriers are they're great units, but they're expensive. And the more carriers you get, the stronger the army becomes. I mean, they become exponentially stronger. He's already got some Goliaths. I'm not sure if that's because he knows his opponent's getting carriers or because he wants to use that to stop drops. Vulture bikes, checking for expos. Terran usually sees the lack of expansion as a sign that the player is macroing up. And the way that Terran also attempts to, to look for this is by scanning the gateways. He wants to see, um, you know, does my opponent have four gateways? Does he have six gateways? And if any, uh, if a flash scans in time and realizes what his opponent's doing, well, then he might start to push earlier on. Also note, anytime scouted, the command center that is being produced. That means anytime he's gonna, he's gonna respond accordingly. Intelligence is everything in StarCraft. And a starport's now being made. Will he use that for dropships or will he use that for raids? I don't know. Carriers being made in both of the starports. And soon enough, he will have the interceptor upgrade. Sucks to be a zealot. Looks like anytime, maybe expanding up here soon. I think I see a probe getting sent to that expansion. Meanwhile, vulture bikes are coming down here. They will not be able to pick off this probe in time, I assume. Meanwhile, Terran pushes out now. Both players don't really have an army right now. They've both gone for uh, an economic game. And then they both realize, well, oh, we're both going for an economic game. Let's get even more economics. I, since I can squeeze off another expansion early on, I might as well do it now. And uh, is he going to make that expansion? I'm not sure. I've seen some players who even position probes at expansions um, and then don't build, uh, don't build anything there just so when the opponent scans the expansion he assumes that an expansion is in fact going to be made. There's all sorts of different ways where you can, uh, you can fake out your opponent. Dragoons and Carriers now gathering up. He's getting a science vessel. The starport is lifted, so I don't think he's going to be getting wraiths out of that anytime soon. Not until he lands it. Now the Carriers are coming up. But they don't have that many interceptors. Two interceptors, three. That's not that's not enough. But oh, he barely managed to pick off that SCV. If he had picked that SCV off at time, maybe he would not have been able to get that many um, that many towers up because the whole process would have been slowed down. 
But now, anytime has made the sacrifice of showing his opponent that yes, I am in fact getting carriers. Now, anytime is going to be more than aware of what's what's going to come. Uh, Terrence is going to be getting a lot of Goliaths. Flash is going to be um, setting up a lot of defenses. Anytime has to stay alive for the next, I would say, five to six minutes until he can get enough carriers that it, the damage is going to be substantial. He's going to sneak over here, see if he can't pick off any SCBs and do any type of harassment, but no, he's going to have to leave very soon, and he does not want to lose his carrier. If he loses his carrier, it could be really bad for him. He cannot afford to... Oh, man. One carrier down. That is a complete waste of a carrier, and anytime knows that. I know that, you know that. It's bad. Carriers built so slowly, they're so expensive. You have to, you have to buy the carrier, and then you have to buy all the little interceptors. Oh, man, it's an investment. And it, because of that, I think it's going to be very, very difficult for any time to recover. When will Flash push? I don't know. I see him upgrading his units now. But that is, um, you know, it's, it's going to be a matter of, of when does he feel like he's comfortable leaving. Uh, upgraded Goliaths are very, very strong against carriers. Absolutely, unbelievably strong. Vulture Bike's now sneaking around Anytime's army at his little containment point. I think Anytime sees it, or at least maybe instinctually knows that something's happening, and is now getting ready to possibly um, intercept those while they're on their way. He's laying mines, flashes, just so he has an idea of if, whether or not his opponent's expanding. Nice positioning by the pylon and that other constructing building. Not, not um, going to allow those units to get, uh, those bikes to get in there. All right, wow, all right, we see carriers coming in here. I don't know if, uh, if his opponent has enough uh, Goliaths. This is very, very, very difficult for Protoss. He lost that carrier early on. He's, he's got a lower interceptor count because of that. That means that Flash is, in my opinion at this point in time, at least a little bit of the favorite. But again, this is a Protoss map, and if you get enough carriers, there's really just not, nothing you could do. I mean, everybody knows that. When you get too many carriers, it's so difficult to stop it. It's, it's, it's really tough. Turrets being made. He does not want to let those carriers do too much harassment. Now that he's got that other expansion, he has three expos that all he can, uh, well, that he can mine, you know, Vespian gas from. So that's going to make it a lot uh, more difficult to only. Well, he has not gotten the Vespian gas geyser yet. But once he gets that, he'll be able to get many, many, many more carriers. Again, anytime setting up at that choke point. He's also using Zealots with leg upgrade to scout. Here he comes again. He's going to try to pick off. Those towers, and Goliath. Oh, man. And it looks like that's not going to work. He wasted all those interceptors. Boom. Not good. Not good at all for the Protoss. And now Terran has decided that while his opponent is rebuilding those interceptors, he's going to leave his base, move across the map, and try to squash him. Oh, that's, a lot of, that's a lot of factories. This guy is good macro. All right. Both players are getting ready to engage each other. He might be able to get a good um, a good surround here. He's coming in on all corners. Most of those tanks are on low ground. Zealots now attacking the tanks in the front. Carriers on the side. Doing a lot of damage. It's very difficult to say who's going to win right now. I'm not entirely sure myself. Terran definitely point, Terran pushed Protoss out, but did he get enough tanks? If Terran can replenish his ground army, he'll easily be able to fight off Goliath. But that is just so many units. I think he's going to move back in again. No, he's not. Terran knows the time is everything right now. He has to move up to that expansion. He has to set up some type of attack. Anytime knows this. Anytime is setting up a large army, macroing like crazy. Once again, he's decided to engage. But there are so many Terran units. He's going to pick off these two tanks with the carriers, but no! Goliaths are just picking off the interceptors too quickly. There aren't even any, or there are barely any interceptors in any of these carriers at all. Look at that. Pushing them all the way back into his base. I think Flash could win right now. This could be a GG. He's going to manage to pick off this carrier too! And this is just so bad for the Protoss. Flash is just marching across the map. Wow! GG, excellent play, unbelievable, Flash is winning on a map that doesn't even favor his race, not only is he winning, he's dominating.
anytime. Probably wishing he had not lost that carry early on. It may sound silly, but that really did have a massive impact on the game. When he lost that carrier, he just lost too much. He lost his momentum. And that's bad.